Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Bob Whitmer. I'm Chairman Emeritus of the Board. And on behalf of Ed Hagem, our current chair, who unfortunately cannot join us today, and the entire board, including our mayor, I see down, down here in front, I want to welcome you to the 44th Annual Garden Party. This is the opportunity the university has to report to its valued supporters in the community. As a lifelong resident of the community and now beginning, about to begin my 33rd year on the board, I am always impressed and grateful in, the, in observing the myriad ways in which the university and the community works together to make this community of Rochester a very special place. The university has provided uh, stability and hope in tough economic times. It provides world-class research, teaching, and clinical care, and attracts some magnificently gifted and accomplished students to the, uh, to the university and to our community. Uh, we have really just begun, however, under the extraordinary and visionary leadership of Joel Seligman, the university has created a sense of energy and excitement within both the university and the community that is positively palpable. After six years as president of the university, you no longer need to hear me recite the many accomplishments and attributes of Joel Seligman. So would you please join me in a very warm welcome, not only to my great friend, but I dare say the friend of nearly everyone in this room and quite possibly the entire community of Rochester, the 10th president of the University of Rochester, Joel Seligman. Bob, thank you. Um, you always set the tone so wonderfully for these annual events at the Garden Party. It's a very special night. We have the largest number of RSVPs in our history, 679. Um, we want to be good hosts, and I assure you, we have the largest number of shrimp in our history for this event. <laughs> for those of you worried about the economy, um, shrimp fishing is doing really well. <laughs> My theme tonight is a tale of two eras. And I want to begin in 1924, when our university was transformed by a capital campaign for what well, was in 1920, a college of arts and sciences with 577 students and 55 faculty into a national university that by the end of the decade included the New River Campus, the School of Medicine and Dentistry, and Strong Memorial Hospital. In 10 days, between November 14th and November 24th, the University of Rochester successfully launched an unprecedented $10 million community capital campaign. One week later, George Eastman contributed an additional $6 million. The 1924 campaign provided much of the $8.2 million in cost of purchasing the Oak Hill Country Club and transforming it into the River Campus, ultimately envisioned to be large enough to accommodate 10,000 students. In 1930, the New York Times would call the results of the capital campaign, and I quote, Rochester's new glory, end quote. The campaign led to the construction of Rush Rees Library, Bausch and Lomb Hall, Dewey Hall, Maury Hall, Lattimore, Gavitt, Strong Auditorium, Todd Union, the Alumni Gymnasium, Falver Stadium, and the Burton and Crosby Residence Halls. The campaign was pivotal 
in helping fund construction of the School of Medicine and Dentistry, led to the creation in 1929 of our Institute of Optics, and the renovation of Sibley Library, the world's finest music library. The university's endowment grew to $16.5 million by 1930, making it the sixth largest in the country. With expanded resources, the campaign transformed our faculty. The School of Medicine and Dentistry earlier had hired George Hoyt Whipple, later a Nobel laureate, to be the founding dean. Whipple recruited from Johns Hopkins and other leading schools of medicine so effectively that when the school opened in 1925, it already had 65 faculty. How did our predecessors do this? There was first an inspiring vision. Longtime university supporter George W. Todd persuaded University President Rush Rees to locate the university's college on what was then the Oak Hill Golf Course near where the new medical center was planned. Lead donors were decisive to the campaign. No one was more important than George Eastman. At a critical meeting in 1923, after Rees presented options for the river campus ranging from five to $10 million, Eastman declared, and I quote, I think we'd better run it up the 10 million flag and see what we get, end quote. <laughs> Eastman pledged the initial $2.5 million to the campaign. George Eastman and Rush Rees already knew that John D. Rockefeller's General Education Board would pledge $2.5 million to match Eastman's commitment. Eastman challenged the Rochester community to raise an additional $5 million. An energetic campaign leadership focused on what the Rochester Review <laughs> called big, wonderful gifts including a $200,000 commitment from the Strong family to construct Strong Auditorium in honor of the late Henry Strong, $300,000 from the leadership of the Bausch & Lomb Company to construct Bausch & Lomb Hall. There were surprises, including a $300,000 commitment made by an anonymous friend of the university. In all, 10 subscriptions of $100,000 each accounted for $1 million of the city total. What made the Rochester campaign unprecedented <laughs> was the extent to which it involved our entire community. Don't you love that? <laughs> <laughs> when the General City campaign opened on November 14, 1924, 600 volunteers attended a dinner in which targets publicly were announced. A publicity committee worked incessantly to articulate the case for the campaign, publishing a near daily $10 million bulletin during the 10-day public campaign. Ultimately, 15,000 letters were sent to potential donors. Successive campaign brochures addressed our university at the crossroads, our university as teacher and neighbor, and build for Rochester. A history of the 1924 campaign records there were subscriptions from newsboys, school children, American Legion Post, labor unions, fraternal, and other organizations. In all, there were 13,733 contributors, including support from 68.5% of living graduates. Underlying the success was a volunteer leadership that included 668 individuals, organized into four core divisions, 10 districts, and 50 teams. The campaign of 1924 was characterized as, quote, the greatest community project ever undertaken in behalf of higher education, end quote. Along with earlier support for the Eastman School of Music, the campaign of 1924 created the modern University of Rochester. Now it is our generation's turn. We are a great research university. In October of this year, the board has supported the public launch of a transformational campaign. By its conclusion in 2016, we envision a university whose quality has fortified its place among the 20 leading research universities in this country based upon measurable achievements in medicine, engineering, and life sciences, as well as outstanding accomplishment in the humanities, social sciences, performing arts, and our professional schools with critical new facilities, such as the Gergen Hall for biomedical engineering and optics. 
Underlying this aspiration is our strength in sponsored research. In fiscal year 2010, total sponsored research at the University of Rochester grew 18%, excluding the special two-year American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, and for the first time in our history, exceeded $400 million. So far this year, through March 31, we've received $325 million in research funding. To put this in different terms, normalized for faculty size, this meant that in the 2009 fiscal year, the most recent year for which we have data, the University of Rochester ranked eighth nationally in federal research funding. Pivotal to our progress is our faculty. They are our core strength, the fundamental reason that students join us here. This was a year of extraordinary faculty achievement. In October 2010, Esther Conwell, a professor of chemistry with a joint appointment in physics, became the first member of the university to be named by the President of the United States as a recipient of the National Medal of Science. In February 2011, Ching Tang, the Doris Johns Cherry Endowed Professor of Chemical Engineering, was named as the recipient of the Wolf Prize for his invention of the organic light-emitting diode, the technology that gave birth to a multi-billion dollar industry that is today used in television, cell phones, and computer screens because of its energy efficiency, superior resolution, and thinness. Ching is widely known as the father of modern organic electronics. His work not only has had broad practical applications, but has led his fellow scholars to cite his publications over 10,000 times. One in th three Wolf Prize recipients in physics, chemistry, and medicine has gone on to win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Lynn McQuatt the J. Lowell Orbison Chair and Professor of Biochemistry, as well as being Director of the Medical, Center's, the Medical School Center for RNA Biology, was elected a member of the National Economy, Academy of Sciences, one of the highest honors in this nation for our most distinguished scientists, for her work in RNA replication. Lynn has achieved an international reputation for research on cell mechanisms that prevent the production of unwanted proteins that disrupt normal cellular processes and can initiate disease. Michael Tannenhaus, the Beverly Peterson Bishop and Charles W. Bishop Professor of Brain and Cognitive Sciences, similarly was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences for his scholarship on how humans derive information from spoken language. One of Tannenhaus's groundbreaking findings is that the human mind is continually guessing what word a speaker is going to <laughs> That's right, say, <laughs> before the speaker has finished the <laughs> word. <laughs> to do this, the brain uses multiple sources of information including the visual context, and in my case, the actual speech, and the speaker's <laughs> likely intentions. In March 2011, former School of Nursing Dean Loretta Lee Ford was selected for the National Women's Hall of Fame, in part for her work developing the unification model of practice, education, and research. Thomas L. Campbell, the William Rochtaschel Professor and Chair of the Medical Center's Department of Family Medicine, was chosen President-elect of the Association of Departments of Family Medicine. Tom is nationally recognized for his work on the role of family in medical practice and the influence of the family on health. Silas Kamejel, Professor of French and Francophone Studies, has been named the new director of the Frederick Douglass Institute for African and African American Studies. The Douglass Institute not only is named in honor of Rochester's greatest leader in the fight against slavery, 
But today, the Institute is a major campus center for multicultural programming, including lectures and conferences. Judy Marquez Kiyama, assistant professor in educational leadership at the Warner School, was selected as a 2011 emerging scholar by the American College Personnel Association. She's one of the five new rising scholars recognized from across the nation for contributions in student affairs and higher education. Jack Kempmeyer, Professor Emeritus of Chemistry who died recently, was an inspiring teacher who developed the innovative peer-led team learning method in chemistry courses that has replaced many traditional recitation sections. Peer-led team learning has greatly improved the teaching of chemistry and now many other science and math courses. Today, an estimated 2,000 peer leaders are facilitating workshops at more than 150 colleges and universities for more than 20,000 students based on Camp Meyer's ideas. Movingly, at his memorial service, colleagues spoke of Jack's unquenchable enthusiasm for improving teaching, often articulated at 7 a.m. breakfast at the Highland Diner. <laughs> Doug Lowry, later this year, will be formally installed as the Joan and Martin Messenger Dean of the Eastman School of Music. Doug has brought Eastman into the 21st century with his leadership of the Eastman Theater renovation and an ambitious strategic plan empowering the Eastman Advantage that celebrates Eastman's musical legacy and Eastman's role as a leader in the future of music. By 2016, we seek a student body that has grown from 8,450 total students in 2004 to 10,000 students while strengthening quality and diversity. We already have made enormous progress. A measure of this recent progress involves undergraduate applications to the College of Arts, Sciences, and Engineering. Last year, we received a record 12,800 applications this year, that number grew by over 1,000 to 13,850. Our entering class will be the most selective in our history, as well as the most diverse in its ethnic, racial, linguistic, and geographic composition. Notably, 15% of our entering first-year students are from abroad. Our campaign's ultimate success, in part, will be measured by our support for our students, most significantly in the form of scholarships, and fellowships. Our students are our future. They are our nation's future. To date, our alumni and friends have contributed over $127 million for our students, bringing us such extraordinary young men and women as the Allen and Jane Handler scholar Alejandro Lopez Zamamie, who arrived at the Eastman School from his hometown of Lima, Peru, and has already achieved success by appearing as first trumpeteer with the National Opera of Peru. Yaniv Fonge, a Susan B. Anthony scholarship recipient, the daughter of parents who emigrated from Cameroon, is a nationally ranked track and field weight thrower, and this year was a finalist for the Rhodes Scholarship and the recipient of the Presidential Award for Community Service. Eastman School of Music doctoral student, Matt Stoiver, was named the best college jazz soloist in Downbeat Magazine's 34th Annual Student Music Awards. He was recognized for his performance in the United States premiere of Suite for Soprano Saxophone and 16 Instruments. Indeed, this year our students truly shined. Two Rochester seniors, Nathaniel Lindsley and Hannah Watkins, and one alum, David Liebers, were named 2011-2012 United Kingdom Fulbright Scholars. Lindsay Watkins and Liebers are our first candidates to succeed in the United Kingdom Fulbright competition and were among only 35 scholars selected from a pool of more than 700 applicants. In all, seven University of Rochester students won Fulbright awards, eight undergraduate and four graduate students won National Science Foundation graduate research fellowships, 11 students received Gilman International Scholarships, Junior Scott Berenfeld won a Goldwater Scholarship. Senior Francis Ferraro won a National Defense Science and Engineering Graduate Fellowship. Hannah Watkins also received the 
or also was the university's first recipient of the Whitaker International Fellowship, and David Liebers also was the university's first recipient of a Gates Cambridge Scholarship. On January 26, 2011, <laughs> Eastman School of Music trumpet student David Aguila appeared on The Tonight Show starring Jay Leno and demonstrated his amazing talent by simultaneously solving Rubik's Cube in his left hand while playing Haydn's trumpet concerto <laughs> with his right hand. And I want you to know, this is really hard when you're not playing a trumpet. <laughs> the University of Rochester will continue to grow as the region's leading employer. As of March 31 of this year, our total full-time equivalent employment grew to 20,128 jobs, a year-to-year -year gain of 465 jobs, making the university the sixth largest employer, uh, sixth largest, excuse me, private sector employer in New York State. This was the first period in which we crossed the 20,000 full-time equivalent job threshold, an important milestone. To put, uh, <laughs> to put this in different terms, the first decade of the 21st century saw a fundamental transformation in the Rochester economy. During that decade, the greater Rochester area lost 43,000 manufacturing jobs. The University of Rochester, in contrast, increased employment by approximately 50%, having begun the 2000 decade with approximately 13,140 jobs. Even before our 2011 public announcement of our campaign, we have been on the move. Between December 6th and December 12, 2010, we celebrated the completion of the $47 million Eastman Theater Renovation and Expansion Project with a six-day festival week. Eastman now achieves George Eastman's dream with a renovated Kodak Hall, the new Hatch Recital Hall, the Wolk Atrium with its distinctive Chihuly sculpture, and Betty's Cafe. On February 20th, Renee Fleming returned to her alma mater Mater, for a gala dedicatory concert to celebrate the new Eastman Theater, concluding with an extraordinarily memorable final encore with three Eastman students. The concert also created the Renee Fleming Endowed Scholarship Fund, which will provide support for students majoring in voice. Our campaign will focus on great programs. We will provide medicine of the highest order exemplified by the expansion of the Wilmot Cancer Center. This new three-story addition will provide 20 new medical oncology beds, a new 12-bed bone marrow transplant unit, and imaging services for patients in the Wilmot Cancer Center. The medical center continues to develop plans for the new Golisano's Children's Hospital. We have a critical need for private pediatric rooms, more space to accommodate families, and the ability to bring all of our pediatric services together in a comprehensive way. This is a priority for the medical center and for the university to provide 21st care, 21st century care, first for our children and ultimately for all of the medical center's patients. In the years to come, the renovation of our clinical care will be one of the most important ways the university serves the greater Rochester community. On March 5, 2011, Strong Memorial Hospital, consistent with that aspiration, launched its new $78 million electronic health record system, the single largest information technology project in university history, with the initial rollout to inpatient units, emergency departments, pharmacies, and outpatient oncology. E-Record replaces several disparate information systems and creates a single integrated electronic health record system shared by the university's entire medical enterprise, which gives all caregivers a comprehensive view of the patient's medical information. The ultimate goal is one patient, one record, one system. Highland Hospital will launch e-record this month 
and ambulatory services are scheduled to integrate e-record by the summer of 2012. In March 2011, the Simon School initiated a new master's program in New York City. That is somewhat south of here. Concern <laughs> concentrating on finance. New York City also served as the backdrop for the second annual Simon Graduate School of Business Conference. This year, nearly 300 people gathered to hear experts from industry, government, and academia discuss emerging risks to America's financial stability. Among the speakers were New York, I'm sorry, New Jersey, let me get this right, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Super Freakonomics co-author Stephen Levitt, and the former United States Secretary of Commerce, Peter G. Peterson. Peterson was honored as the Simon School's inaugural Executive of the Year. On March 15, 2011, Board Chair Ed Hagem and I presided at the announcement that the University Board had approved the construction of a $24 million new home for the Warner School of Education. This new building will be named the Raymond F. LeChase Hall in recognition of the late lead gift made by Raymond's son, University Trustee Wayne LeChase, and Wayne's wife, Beverly. K-12 education is one of the great social challenges of the 21st century. While many universities have scaled back their support for schools of education, the University of Rochester is determined to invest in K-12 education as part of our commitment to the greater Rochester community and most of all to our children. Our city schools face daunting challenges. The Rochester City School District continues to experience some of the lowest graduation rates in the country with only 46% of high school students graduating on time. The New York State Department of Education late last year indicated that only 5% of Rochester high school graduates are prepared for college. These rates are among the lowest in the state. Now these data should be seen in context. Rochester also ranked 11th nationally in child poverty, with 42% of our children under the age of 18 living in poverty, the highest poverty rate among the state's five largest school districts. The way forward for the 135,000 K-12 students in Monroe County is education. It is far more difficult for those without a high school diploma to find jobs and impossible for most to attend college. Without success in K-12, we are freezing out of the American dream about half of Rochester's high school students. This is a crisis of fundamental consequence. We owe our children a better future. The university's commitment to the new building for the Warner School is our way of signaling our determination to be part of the solution to this great challenge. We look forward to working with the city and Warner School leadership on ways to strengthen K-12 education in Rochester. On April 8, 2011, New York Lieutenant Governor Bob Duffy and Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver joined us for the dedication of the nation's first clinical and translation science building. Brad Burke, the Medical Center Chief Executive Officer, publicly announced that the new 200,000 square foot building would be known as the Saunders Research Building in honor of E. Philip Saunders, whom Brad earlier that week had announced and made a $10 million gift to the medical center. A grand highlight of this year was the selection of Fairmount Properties of Cleveland to be the university's development partner for our potential 16-acre college town on Mount Hope Avenue between Elmwood Avenue and Crittenden Boulevard. Fairmount has created successful spaces and programming events and has already submitted a proposed vision for Mount Hope that includes services in support of the campus and the community. College Town, if approved by our board, will include up to 500,000 square feet with a hotel and conference center, a YMCA that will offer health and fitness programs in collaboration with the medical center, child care, gourmet, a gourmet grocery store, office space, other retail establishments, a transit center operated by the Regional Transit Authority would facilitate public transportation to the university and provide an eagerly, and I mean eagerly, awaited parking facility. <laughs> like the earlier development at Brooks Landing, College Town will add strength to another adjoining community with vitally needed retail and community gathering spaces. 
This project has already received enthusiastic support from many in the neighborhood. Now, alas, College Town will mean the end of the townhouse motor inn and restaurant, <laughs> which for decades was celebrated, among other things, as the university's only fireproof inn. <laughs> the townhouse potentially will be succeeded by a 25,000 square foot bookstore on the corner of Mount Hope and Elmwood. Our Senior Vice President for Administration and Finance, Ron Paprocki, is leading university efforts in this very important project, including detailed due diligence. In a separate development, in April of this year, the Rochester Cultural Center Commission accepted the university's offers, offer to purchase Block F, a 1.6 acre parcel of land on East Main Street, across the street from the Eastman School of Music. This parcel is of strategic importance to the Eastman School since it provides an opportunity for the expansion of the school's facilities in the future. The sale will be complete upon approval by the City Council and the County Legislature, as well as the University's Environmental Review. The intent is for the University to engage a private developer to undertake a mixed-use development that likely will include residential and retail space. The Memorial Art Gallery Thanks to underwriting from the Ed Mack Foundation and our longtime gallery patron, Joan Feinblum, has commissioned site-specific works by noted American sculptors Wendell Castle and Jackie Ferrara for its Centennial Sculpture Park, scheduled to open during the Memorial Art Gallery's 100th anniversary in 2013-2014. The new sculpture park will be a highlight of Mag's gala celebration of its first 100 years as one of this nation's great regional art museums. This year, our laboratory for laser energetics also celebrates an anniversary, its 40th. The laser lab is participating with Lawrence Livermore and other national labs in one of the 21st century's most critical energy experiments, the attempt to achieve nuclear fusion, that is, ignition in the laboratory, popularly known as NIF. This is the Manhattan Project of our time. As one scientist put it, a holy cow game changer. <laughs> Laser fusion, unlike current nuclear power plants, is safe, cannot melt down, is carbon free, non-radioactive, and potentially will provide an inexhaustible source of energy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have built the foundation for a comprehensive capital campaign. In four years, our George Eastman Circle, the University Annual Giving Society, has grown to 1,745 members, each of whom has made a five-year pledge that help us double our annual fund in five years. We are on our way to the public announcement of the university's largest capital campaign in our history at our October 2011 Meliora weekend. All of you are invited. <laughs> Former President, Bill Clinton will be our keynote speaker. Meliora Weekend 2011 will feature over 200 events for alumni, parents, and friends from across the university. We anticipate that this year's Meliora Weekend will be the best attended in our history. Our time is now. We have the capacity, the will, and the talent. We build on enormous strengths. We are home to one of the greatest faculties of any research university in the country. We have world-class programs in fields as varied as music, optics, financial economics, and neuromedicine. I believe, all of us at the university believe in our motto, Meliora, ever better. We seek to take a great research university and make it ever stronger. We seek to build an ever stronger Rochester. For we will never forget that we are an urban university, proud to be part of the Rochester community, deeply aware that our progress and Rochester's success are inextricably linked. Thank you.